it's uh, monsoon season in Arizona. We uh, the air has been real tacky and kind of humid and stuff. Humid for Arizona, and uh, we're um, it's July 4th today. And last year I didn't do such a great job in trying to uh, document and video my. Uh, my experience with tepary beans. So this year I'm doing a better job. Last year I learned a lot of lessons. And uh, so stick with me. Let's get started. All right, so these are seeds from my uh, harvest last year from, from my own plants. And uh, I, I, I went through uh, all the seeds I, I gathered. I didn't get a whole bunch. I, I got three quarters of a pound maybe, maybe a pound of, uh, of beans. Um, and then these are the, uh, these are the seeds that I bought last year for planting. So, um, I've got, I've got, uh, the white tepary. These are called Sonoran gold. They're just a brown, brown bean. And then I've got black, uh, Mitla black. Last year I didn't plant the blacks, but uh, this year I'm going to plant some of those as well. So this year what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this bed uh, with my plants and I'm going to also get some starters going in here. Uh, and that's because the other bed is not empty yet and ready. So I I think what I'll probably do is use most of my beans, my seeds, from last year. I'll give you guys... All right, now something happened weird with the... Um, with my Sonoran Gold compared to the Sonoran Gold that I got online. So if you look here, here's... Uh, these are the ones I bought. If you look at mine compared to them, mine are much lighter. Um, I'm not sure why, but I'll explain some things that happened last year that uh, were some lessons learned. Um, okay, so last year, <clears throat> last year we had um, we we had success. However, the, the problem was that uh, I listened to this, some people uh, online that uh, I think were just experimenting themselves or whatever. Uh, it, you know, it was, I was having a hard time finding some specific information on uh, when to plant, exactly how to plant them. Uh, so what I ended up doing was planting season for most of your garden stuff, your vegetables and everything. Here is in March, and uh, so we planted in March. Then uh, I, I think it was around July. Uh, July, yeah, because my my wow, tomorrow's our anniversary. So last year at our anniversary, we went down to um, uh, east of Tucson. There's a a uh, little town down there called Salsa, Arizona. Uh, talked to a farmer, one of the farmers who works on their main, uh, uh, th their crops down there for, for tepary. And he was like, oh, you know, we don't plant until, until uh, July typically. So I planted way too early. And the other thing is we had a real wet year last year. So uh, my beans ended up, my plants ended up getting lots of water. Because you water them fairly heavily until they sprout. After they sprout, you want to cut back on the watering. And these plants are are amazing. They're they're the tepary bean plant is considered the most drought resistant plant in the world, and uh, and I believe it after last year because I had I had a, a problem where I had these beautiful plants that were really lush, really green, but everything was grow going into growing the plant and not producing any uh, any fruit, any any beans on the plant. So he told me to he told me to um, stop watering the plants, stress them out. So we literally stopped. I didn't give them a drop of water, and by that time monsoon season was over, so we weren't getting much rain anymore. 
and uh, I think six weeks I didn't give them a drop of water and I went on a business trip and while I was gone my wife sent me a picture of um, a couple beans that had come out and I think I flew home two days later and by the time I got home two days later the plants were covered with beans it was amazing uh, it was really really cool so this year we waited uh, it's now July and uh, I, I, I'm probably even a little bit late I, I could have gone end of end of June first week of July in there but the idea is plant them now um, I should get a harvest in nice. Yeah, I should get a harvest in October, if I remember correctly. And then I should be able to get one more uh, planting in uh, by the end of the year. But uh, anyway, so that's a quick story on, on what happened last year, the lessons learned. Um, and the lessons learned being, A, don't overwater them because you'll get beautiful plants but no fruit. Uh, these plants can withstand uh, uh, lack of water. There's no problem with that at all. Um, uh, what was the other problem? Oh, the the last issue we had last year was uh, again I was having a hard time finding information, blah blah blah. So I ended up with a situation where I had really really tall plants and they vined into each other and just became a huge uh, mess, tangled mess. So everything in the middle died. I mean the plants were essentially dead in the middle. It was all dry and everything but on the outside it was this big massive beautiful bush. <laughs> it was really odd. Um, so I, I got some uh, tomato cage things to, to you know, kind of like these guys that are back here. Um, we're going to use those this year. I'm not going to plant the seeds as close to each other as, as I did last year. And uh, So this thing is, I don't know, three feet wide. I'll probably go probably go about three wide, about a foot apart for each for each bean, I'm thinking. Last year I only had them like four or five inches apart. Um, but th this year I'm, I, and actually last year I, I was surprised. I got a pretty good harvest uh, considering how few plants I had because I, I ended up pulling a couple of the plants out completely just to open things up a little bit. I think I pulled out four plants. Um, so that and the fact that I overwatered that whole thing, I was really surprised at how how well they ended up doing. So this year I'm expecting a bumper crop. I never knew what bumper crop meant, but I wanted to use it. <laughs> All right, so let's get to planting. Okay, so we're going to start just by getting some soil in here because, like I said, I'm going to do some starters in here for the other bed. I'll plant those. I'll plant those inside. So what we what I had done last year and already did this year was we got a bunch of uh, soil uh, plant planting soil or whatever it and Home Depot, but I also mixed mixed several five-gallon buckets worth of local dirt, and uh, the, the the neighborhood I live in is still under development. So there's empty lots where they've dug up piles of dirt and stuff, and so I just went and shistered some of the dirt to mix in with my garden. So basically all you want to do is plant these guys down, I don't even need this, about uh, just a couple inches. I'm probably not in focus here, but so let's see, I'll go about a foot from the other one. And you're going to plant these and I'm just doing one per hole. Last year, uh, last year it was awesome. I'm not doing all the marking, you know, where my plants are and stuff. I'll I'll remember well enough, and then they'll start sprouting up. Wow. 
Man, those are tiny. There's the blacks, guys. So the the black. Uh, that's uh, kind of weird. They're they're even smaller than than the other ones were. They're small beans, anyways. They're you know you cook them up like like uh, pinto beans or you know any other bean. But they're um, they're really high in protein, higher in protein than most of your other beans. So I'm going to start the blacks now. The others I was just doing one because they're they're bigger beans. And these I'm gonna do two. There's no real logic there. I'm just I just felt like doing two.